This review has been brought to you in part by APS. I'm going to run through this reel as fast as I can. This is the ASR 109 by APS. Uh, externally a solid, solid looking gun. Really, really well built. Internally there's been some new modifications. Big one is the Bakelite switch that they've put in to stop it burning out on the trigger contact. But they also put in what they have called a Systema copied um, MOSFET. We're at Main Irish Airsoft range. I'm going to give this a quick uh, fire to give you an idea of the electric blowback and uh, some thoughts on the battery system. Now, as you have listened in the video already, this is a stock tube jobby. It has a MOSFET in it. Uh, the battery fits into the stock tube. Because the MOSFET is already there, there's bugger all room to fit many batteries in it. Now, APS as a package sell this particular model with its own battery, a sling, and some goggles and bits and pieces, which is all great. Uh, it, this is a budget gun, it's a starter's gun. Now, I say budget, we're talking, this is certainly probably high end budget. Uh, it's a full metal gun, and for people wanting a little bit more of a solid piece, they're going to look at models like this. Uh, and that's great, but most people starting off airsoft uh, are going to run into a lot of troubles with lipos. Now, this is the battery they supply. This is a 7.4, 1100 uh, milliamp. It's around a 15C rating, which is a very small, very low uh, rated battery. There's not a huge amount of juice and there's not much game uh, playing time in this. And that will always be a bit of a problem. Now, uh, lipos are temperamental buggers. You need to know what you're doing to charge them. Uh, there's a lot of... Uh, mythology and uh, scaremongering on the internet about lipos going wallop and bang and expanding and exploding and all the rest. But it does happen, but the amount it happens doesn't uh, sort of add up to the stories that you get to hear. But for a guy starting off or a novice in airsoft who probably doesn't have a dedicated charger like this system here that's behind me, um, you need to have a really good smart charger to deal with the charging of a lipo that's my first issue i have here uh, my second issue is is the limitation of batteries that can actually fit in you know if they put on a different stock like a sock mod yes i know most people don't like sock mod stocks but at least it will give you options on batteries whereas this is a dedicated stock tube lipo that's all you can fit in it and even then you're very limited to the style of of lipo that you can fit in it so i'm just going to attach the battery and as you can see, it's a tight fit in there with the MOSFET. But I'm, just, I'm not going to put on the stock for this demonstration. So, just to give you an idea, it's a great crisp action on the electric blowback. It's typical APS. It's probably one of the best uh, EBBs out there. Um, now, my problem with this whole system is, I've already explained that the very low sort of uh, or small lipo that you can fit in it but th my biggest issue is why did they even put in a MOSFET in the beginning? They were having uh, a, a big problem with their trigger switches melting under load. Now they listened to it and sent out a Bakelite trigger switch which because it's made of Bakelite didn't suffer with the meltdowns that they were having before and they thought that they'd sort of allay customers further uh, their fears further by adding a MOSFET system so now they have two points to stop any uh, potential overloads with the power. The problem is the Bakelite does the job on its own it doesn't need anything else other than a normal battery. It doesn't need a MOSFET and, and the big issue I have with this MOSFET, MOSFET system is that because it's a cheap clone and it has to be a cheap clone to fit into a budget gun of this nature because it's a cheap clone, it'll never stand up to uh, the rigours of a decent MOSFET. And the issue I've had with this so far has been that once you start to put out any amount of fire, uh, especially in full auto, the MOSFET takes a reading with its electrical uh, its circuit board on, on here. It takes a reading of the battery and once the battery starts to drain in any significant amount from especially full burst mode, it tells 
uh, itself that the battery is now drained below safe level and it cuts everything out. All power is stopped to the motor to save any damage happening or possible gearbox lockup. But what it does in fact do is lock up the gearbox every single time. Uh, the quickest and easiest way we found out of that is having an 11.1 .1 LiPo fully charged with us, put, pop it on, give it a quick spin and it will un un unlock the, the, the gearbox. But that shouldn't be the case. It's a very small uh, LiPo that it comes with, it's a very small C rating, it's a very low milliamp. Having a MOSFET controlling it in that manner is never going to work and it's going to leave a lot of frustrated gamers out there who will be into a game no more than 5 or 10 minutes and they'll have a dead gun. Unless they have a serious amount of these knocking around and are willing to change it every 10 or 15 minutes in game, I think you're going to have a lot of pissed off players. So APS, you know you've made all the right moves in the right directions but you've gone one bridge too far with the MOSFET, drop it out, there's no need for it and you're causing problems where there shouldn't be and you're making it impossible to find the right batteries and uh, it's just causing problems it doesn't need to have. But do you know what, for the first time ever I have to say this does it for me. Um, I like the external, do you know I think it's because the old sort of pot metal has been distressed to give it that more authentic look. I like the overall shape of this. I could actually see myself going into field playing with an AK for the first time ever with this model. But that's where it stops. Because we're back to the same problem with the M4, the MOSFET in this particular gun is ruining everything. Now, <coughs> Talking to Chris in Maine Irish Airsoft, Chris has extensive experience with the APS guns, both in M4 variants and in the AK range. And he says the AK range themselves are much better than the M4s for whatever reason, whatever the difference is with the gearbox. Um, they outrange, outperform, and just don't give any grief compared to the M4s. So that said, I'll just give it a quick test. This is running off a 9.6 stick battery. It's a nickel, nickel metal hydrate battery. Um, <coughs> You could fit in a stop tube LiPo again. The problem with this is we're getting a lot of gearbox lockup down to the MOSFET, misreading the battery level. This battery is fully charged. And again, the, the blowback is nice and crisp. And now, that's just brand new off the charger and we've locked up. Uh, the MOSFET is now reading that the battery, because it's been in full auto, has gone lower than the safe level. It's cut out all the juice to the gearbox, and we are now locked. So, any player going out to play and getting literally uh, more, no more than sort of 30 rounds out before he has to change his battery, it's not good for uh, the game. Uh, the, you know, it's pants, to be honest with you. Um, APS. As I said already on the M4, it's a bridge too far, take out the MOSFET, dump it, scrap it, it's not worth doing, it's causing you no ends of problems and um, what otherwise would be absolutely fantastic uh, guns for review have been sort of mired by the MOSFET. Uh, this is, as I said, a superb looking piece of kit and if you're an AK liker or lover, I, I, you're going to love this, this is superb but the MOSFET will have to go. Right, they, these guns are shipping standard with a, with a, a MOSFET built in. Yep. Um, I, I'm really on the fence with MOSFETs myself now. I'm kind of, I'm not really taken back with them that much. I know how they work and why they work. Um, do we need a MOSFET in this, considering that they've got bait no. light on the trigger contact? We're only using 7.4 LiPos at yeah. max, we're not using 11.1s. And, and there's and not a ridiculous rate of fire out of them, so no, I would, I wouldn't, a MOSFET is not actually uh, needed, in a, not in the sports line. Well, mid-range sports lines, no. Um, I, I'd actually prefer it if it was just standard wording inside it. It'd be a lot healthier, a lot less problems. So, is there a, a quick and easy way to rid the MOSFET out of the system. Yeah, basically you just desolder those two wires, or just if you wanted, you could just change that completely for a King Arms one, and just stick in a King Arms with rear wording loom or a forward wording loom, depending on where you want your battery. Now the shim job on the gearboxes themselves are only okay. There is a lot of play still in some of the um, the, the gears there, and it's something that you know if you're a a tinkerer of gearboxes you need to probably have a reshim of this. Um, 
other than that, you know, the, the, the gearbox is fairly solid, but you know, there's a couple of big problems there in my mind. This is a different nozzle to this is the air nozzle here. This is a different nozzle to the one that was supplied. Now, Chris discovered this in Main Irish Airsoft that if he took off the air nozzle here and he put in have one here already prepared, a bog standard hop unit and took out the APS hop unit, he was able to create uh, a gun that had a minimum of 15 meters extra range. So to run over that again, keeping everything standard in the gun that it ships with, uh, the gun has a poor range on it. Swap out the hop unit that's in the gun for a standard hop unit and therefore you must change the air nozzle because the APS ships with a very unique air nozzle that only fits its hop unit. By fitting the two uh, into the system you now have a gun that will outrange uh, its predecessor by 15 meters. 15 meters in airsoft is a savage distance and can make all the difference in your gameplay. So as far as I'm aware Chris has informed APS of his findings uh, as of yet. I don't think APS have decided to rework their guns and change that system because they're shipping these with the standard hop unit that they have designed themselves. And you, APS, you really need to look at this because this will make a big difference to players. So the AK as I said, uh, is a cracking looking piece, but it suffers from the same problems that the M4 has with the MOSFET. And it's the weak link is the MOSFET. Take MOSFET out and you'll have a solid performing gun. The difference is with the AK is that uh, unlike the hop unit in the M4, the AK uh, hop unit is actually quite a good one and the range is fine and you don't need to tamper with it or tinker with it. So it's only the M4 hop unit that is substandard in my opinion. So this has been Jerry from Oddie's Airsoft. Uh, this is my take on the new ASR 109 and the ASK 206. Uh, we're going to hand you over to Mark. Mark is going to have his two pennies worth on the system himself. Right, so my take on this gun. Um, it's a budget to mid-range gun. It's nicely made. There are some nice pieces. I do like the fact that APS have taken note of some of the failings in their initial design, you know, they, they replaced the uh, the trigger contacts with bake like as Jerry said to, to stop them burning out. They've stopped using the fibre composite plastic uh, bushings. They have now moved to metal bushings, but it, having said that, they're brass. Right? Brass is actually quite a soft metal, so while they're better than the plastic, they're not optimal. If you're going to put in bushings, you know, put in decent steel ones. But, and you know, while it might seem like a good idea, to put a MOSFET into a gun, you know, to enable it to uh, run maybe you know 11-1 lipos if you really want to, and to protect the uh, the trigger contacts. Is it really needed in a gun uh, in this particular price range? It sounds good on paper, but I don't think this is the best implementation that the APS could have done um, with a MOSFET. You know, there are limitations, as Jerry said, with the size of battery that can actually fit into the, the buffer tube. And that is causing issues. Um, playing with it, you know, with a fully charged battery, after a few, few minutes, the battery goes to such a level that the MOSFET thinks it's actually drained, and the gun stops firing. Uh, we've also had issues running on 8.4s, 9.6s, when we didn't have the stock on, they're getting battery lockup, or gearbox lockup. And the way we got around that was putting an 11 one lipo on into the gun and firing it that way. So, a good effort, possibly by APS. They're certainly heading in the right direction uh, in turn, insofar as they're they're listening to the um, criticisms uh, that people have about their guns. But maybe this MOSFET could have been thought out a little bit better.